drawback area is one that people are starting to look at and say, are we leaving money on the table? Would that be a fair assessment? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the the, the 301 tariffs, especially, there's some commodities, uh, complete like categories of products that never had tariffs, right? They're, they're, or, or very minimal. And now they're paying, you know, millions or tens of millions and sometimes in some cases a whole heck of a lot more, right? You guys would also do the drawbacks for, for companies, or is it just because of the data, et cetera? I guess just kind of just trying to understand that fully. You know, as a compliance professional, when I'm working with a, uh, a client or a company and I'm asking, can I get your entry data? Can I get your product data? You know, a lot of companies aren't organized where they have all their products in a very clean take database or they have all their entry files readily available for them to review. So when we wanted that data, it was very hard to get entry packets, very hard to get product information. So when I was working with Flexport on the other side, on the client side, Flexport had all the data readily available. And I said, this is a great opportunity for consulting to come in. The data is already there. The client, You already have access to the client. So being able to work with the client and the brokerage and the freight all in one piece just made consulting a lot more easier. Well, I know that from a personal standpoint, I have clients that are... Um, I'm working with that are uh, importing and exporting to and from uh, South Af- a- <clears throat> excuse me South Africa as well as Namibia and in those areas and with that um, they're especially South Africa now Namibia is a great port to go in and out of uh, quite frankly I'm surprised people aren't using it more but you just mentioned some of it has to do with the uh, the infrastructure but I will also say that the, there's congestion in the ports in South Africa because there's just not enough frequencies. And so what's happening is it's like trying to get things in and out of there with the containers and whatnot. And I'm like, hey, this ought to be a great opportunity. So it's part of the Middle East ongoing conflict with the Houthis and, you know, what's going on from an overall area perspective, if you will. Um, but it has dramatically impacted supply chains as far as time to market. Um, you know, now if you have to go around the Cape of Good Hope, uh, it's adding extreme amounts of days and timing associated with that. And all of these ships that are set up, they're anticipating a specific schedule as to when they're going to get to destination, then pick up the next set of cargo and go on. But now when you're elongating that process and you start missing those dates, you're going to have blank sailings. You're going to have a lot of issues that has this ripple effect from a supply chain perspective. So when you think about this, the groups that are really, really affected is obviously anybody that wanted to transit to that, um, that specific area. Because <clears throat> one of the things you're going to get hit with, even if you want to go through um, and exercise the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea and to ship through there, is you're going to probably definitely get hit with significantly higher cargo insurance um, to transit those areas. Classification becomes key, determines your duty rate, but also admissibility out of a country into a country. What do you have to do for additional government agency filings, you know, that kind of thing. Um, So I don't know, Jen, if you want to just talk to kind of what you're seeing from clients and kind of what they're asking you for um, recently. Yeah, I mean, we do get a lot of requests, and I think not only for the Suez Canal situation, but just because of China Section 301 tariffs, like a lot of the requests that we get from the consulting side is if we were to change now our sourcing from you know China to another non-China country, and they will give us like a potential list. Like if we were to switch, if you do give us the duty rates, you know, and then what we'll do is let them know what the duty rates would now be, and if there's any other information that they would need to consider sourcing from those countries. And so they kind of take it upon themselves kind of doing the business assessment of whether they want to kind of move forward with it. I know it's not an easy switch for com- for companies, right? You know, moving your supply chain, your sourcing is a big lift, but it, it is this due diligence that they're doing to kind of now look into other areas of sourcing that's outside of China. Hey, Andy, let me, let me add to what Jen was saying is that, you know, from one of the things that we've been seeing over the past in a, a number of years that Jen, I think, alluded to was the fact that companies were looking a lot at the, the Section 301 tariffs out of China. And so a lot of companies were moving their product from China to other Southeast Asian countries to avoid that. And now with the Suez Canal issue, they're, they're going back and reevaluating. One of the things that was being looked at um, was, you know, should we move to Southeast Asia or should we move closer to home here in the U.S., maybe like Central America, Mexico, and so forth? Regional, and that also brings in another, another, um, another criteria to look at, and that is the free trade agreements, right? So if you have, uh, you might, you might be able to produce something in Southeast Asia, 
and pay a normal, not pay the Section 301 duty, but you're going to pay the regular duty. But maybe you can tra- move the production to, say, Mexico and avoid the regular duty. But then you also have the issue of the Suez Canal. And we really haven't touched on Panama Canal. The Panama Canal is also having issues where they're, they, they're, they're slowing down there. The drought, the environmental issues there, they're not able to transmit as many vessels through the, through the Panama Canal. So there's a lot of things that companies are looking at. And I would say a lot of things that customs is looking at. When I say customs, I'm talking about all the various different customs administrations around the world. Because in, in our, in our, in our history and working with, with, um, trade, we always looked at where the product was finally produced and how it got to the destination where it needed to go to. Well, customs and companies now are looking a lot further behind, back and forward in their supply chains. And I know we never script this. We never really even, I mean, we barely mention what we're going to talk about on our, on all our podcasts, this, this being the same uh, case here. But it's funny how you and the first three episodes of our season were all about data. I mean, it's like we had, um, we have former commissioner Alan Burson. He was talking about data. We had uh, Vinny Annunciato on the show, and he they're talking about this really cool program that they're working on. And uh, and then we had, of course, Cindy and, uh, and Amy Magnus um, talking about what is the most important thing for 2024. It's everybody almost hands down is data, data, data. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to turn it back over to you. We hope this has been an informative uh, discussion. Uh, we will definitely have the Flexport contact folks, uh, you know, on our show notes and, and whatnot. But also just in general, I mean, this isn't an ad for Flexport, although it kind of sounds that way. It's one of those is just a, a case where talking out there, what do you need to be looking at? Managing your data. If you're struggling with that, get experts out there. Are you leaving uh, money on the table? Look at your duty drawback uh, capabilities. Uh, look at your uh, changing of sourcing and whatever. Get experts involved. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. And, uh, you know, our fine folks from Flexport and there's other companies that we've uh, highlighted and all that are, are very well worth uh, checking out. 